Welcome back to Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. In the last episode, we uh, helped out Waldrif with uh, discovering the uh, true traitor who had. Uh, what's it called again? Stolen Moon. Betrayed. The Thiefling Gang to. Uh, Irabeth, who turned out to be a Baphomet cultist, that guy. So, um, this is, this is, uh, his companion quest in this chapter. And, uh, now we need to talk to him at the, uh, inn before we finish Canabras. Uh, so, uh, as we are... Is this anything of use? No. As we are on, uh, the, uh, side of town where, uh, we can't really reach anything here. We need to cross the uh, market square. Uh, see, market square. Actually, yeah, that's through the market square. That's through the market square. We can't go there. This is on this side, so we probably will go to these locations before we go to the other side here. Uh, but I would like to go to the Aranday party house to pick up uh, another companion. But first, let's go back to the Defender's Heart. Get a little random encounter on the way. Our victory is certain. Uh, are there more than one of them? No. Attack! An expected outcome. I see no reason to keep the uh, turn-based mode off uh, on on that one. Twenty-seven experience. So it's not really all that much. We are three thousand four hundred-ish experience points away from leveling up. Follow my lead. I am prepared. Have a quick chat with Waldrif. Look, Chief, I got something to show you. Ta da! <laughs> a real beaut, isn't it? So you did betray the tieflings. Oh, that cuts me deep, Chief. You and I saw who the traitor was. It's just that when we robbed the shop, I went in first and took what I wanted. Nothing wrong with that. No, of course not. Although, of course, I did think about hiding the moon and just taking myself off somewhere warm when all this blows over. But only because I want to see the world. Is it a crime to want to travel? Huh? Is that what counts for treachery these days? Did you really have the amulet this whole time? Since that night, Chief, Melround didn't even set eyes on it. While he was dealing with the golem, I sneaked past them, and that was that. Remind me, why is this item so important? Do you really not remember it? Oh, I thought you would appreciate it. It's from the old man Fileman, the owner of the Ancient Trees and Wonders shop. It's the pride of his collection. The Moon of the Abyss, an amulet with a rare crystal crafted by an unknown maker. When I think of how much this thing is worth, it makes my head spin. You've been searched by guards. How did you manage to hide the amulet? <laughs> Thieves have their ways. Why did you give it to Charisme right away? What? So she would slay me right away, you mean? You saw how antsy she was over Canabras and all this. So I did it. I took the Moon of the Abyss. But I didn't go to Irabeth, and Big Sister wouldn't hear my explanations. She doesn't have the time. I even thought I'd hide the moon somewhere, and then when all the noise had died down, I'd go get it and make a run for it. I'm sick of the thieflings, and they never appreciated me anyway. Can't possibly imagine why. Uh, why did you steal the Moon of the Abyss? You wouldn't have been able to sell an item so rare anyway. <laughs> why, he asks? It's expensive, pretty. And you know, it's my amulet, actually. Not meaning I stole it, but... I, I mean, this is my inheritance. 
My grandma and I were poor. All we had was a jewelry box with the moon in it. She used to store it under the floor in the basement, and she'd take it out sometimes just to look at it. <laughs> she was always nicer when she had a few drinks in her, so I could ask her things then. One time I asked where she got it from, and she said it was from a demon. You know, the demon who was my grandfather. He said the moon was to be passed down. My mom was good for nothing and nobody, so that's why grandma decided to keep the amulet for me. She used to say it would be mine when I grew up. But she couldn't wait until I grew up. She squandered my inheritance when she became a drunk. Took it to Fileman's shop and pawned it. He gave her some coppers for it and she didn't even haggle. Just grabbed them and ran back to the tavern before last orders. I've been going to Fileman's to look at the moon ever since I was a kid. He chased me away, but I just kept going back, so eventually he gave up. He didn't skimp on security. The place was like a fortress, so he wasn't worried about a street rat like me pinching anything. Even when I got more skilled, I couldn't get any closer to it. One day, I had no one to go with. Another day, there were only oafs who'd never stolen anything more than a church donation box. But when Charisme had planned everything out, I, I realized I had a chance to get the moon and move away from here. Maybe to Garen, I, I hear it's warmer there. I've stayed with the family for too long. For once, I actually want to pick the evil choice. You did the right thing by not giving away the amulet. Stealing from thieves isn't even stealing. You have to put yourself first. Allies, friends, it's all a load of crap. Life brings us together, forces us to make plans, do whatever it is we do, but it's a safe bet that this ain't forever. I might be a traitor, but the others... Are they any better than me? Melround had a good reputation in the family. He was trusted, and you see what happened. If you abide by the law, anyone can rob you. So you need to break the law first when no one expects it, and run before you go soft and get too attached. Well, my character would not agree. Whatever you think, I owe you. I'm not just a thief. I have my own business selling things. Thanks to you, I'm still in the family, and they... Well, I mean, we have the black market sewn up in this city. It's a good way to sell valuables. So, if you need anything, a scroll or something, just say the word. I have a little portal to our people in Erosian. You put a note there, and you get what you need. I can't get you anything big, but what they do have is all high quality. Nothing's too good for you, Chief. What's mine is yours. For a price, of course. Of course. So... Can I actually um, buy from him? Doesn't necessarily have the best things. I mean, the Estoc of Estoc of Purity. If you have the uh, opportunity to use an Estoc, is not bad. It has a decent critical hit range, eighteen to twenty. It does decent damage. But, uh, Dwarven Urgrosh, no. The gnome hooked hammers are really not something that I like, neither the darts, so. This could potentially be good for a monk, but with that name you'd expect it to uh, trip them. Print his lockpicks, that could always be decent, but uh, to be honest, no, it's nothing. Uh, that should have completed that. Uh, before we travel on, I think I want to... Let me just check my... Yeah, I want to sell a couple As of things, so I'll just do that quickly. There we go. Now we can just uh, take a quick nap. A uh, camellia is a plant, right? Something like water hemlock? And Lon is some specimen of underground fauna? Like a horned toad? <laughs> I know see her. Uh, now we need to bring Camellia with us. Um, does she have okay-ish weapons? 
I think we'll use her as a melee character instead of um, ranged because she does have decent enough uh, armor class. So I did forget to have a look at whatever it is. This, no. This. I don't think this will uh, give us uh, <laughs> much. No. Okay, area exit and leave. And we'll replace. Uh, I th think we'll replace. Our mercenary. I want to kick him out. Uh, we'll replace our mercenary with uh, Camellia. Otherwise, I would have to go back for her, and uh, that's going to be annoying. Let's uh, head on down to uh, the Silken Thread. Actually, no. Let's head to the Arende uh, party house. Dretches in there. Can you charge? No. And move out of the way. Let's try this way. Well done. I didn't expect him to uh, a decent crit. You crossed the wrong mongrel. Which means that was uh, quite simple. Let's collect all the uh, stuff we can collect from these uh, crates and. Uh, what not? This quest is actually quite amusing. What a splendid occasion, Count! And this new Numerian elixir is quite something. Oh, look, such darling little creature. Ow, ow, ow. I smell beauty. They're, they're demons. Help. Save the Wonderful. Last one for me. Now brace yourself for the smell of your own blood, you ghastly eyesore. that if I give him a potion of a large person, uh, can I uh, drink that? I want to go there and then uh, use this. Of course it had to move. This will hurt. There's a Ranka. You won't survive me. There's a wizard there, I didn't notice him. Um hmm. Uh. 
cover me, all right? The light! Take you! A calculated risk. I think maybe using all of those uh, potions might have been slightly exaggerated. Endure this! Knowledge world, we should have more than ten in that. Portrait of Galfrey Mendev, ruler of the kingdom and founder of all crusades into the world wound. Let's uh, loot a couple of things. Very happy if I could find a master world dagger. Decimation, that is a, an interesting... Uh, Little thing, uh, there's a knowledge world up here as well. It went splendidly. The intricate patterns on the harp depicts the stars, the moons, and butterflies, the hallmarks of Desna. Here's Aranka. Thank you, stranger. The young woman does not look the least bit scared. Her cheeks are flushed and her blue eyes are glittering. For saving us from the demons and for your timely entrance. I swear, I don't know, know who has enraged me more today, the demons or the oh-so-affable master of this house. I'm a friend of Ilk's. He asked me to find you and protect you. The young woman clasps her hands together. Ilk's is alive? And he's made a brilliant new friend. It's a shame it had to happen now when the city is under siege by the demons and those pig-headed inquisitors are pursuing us instead of doing something useful. How did he end up here? Ulrun's hounds found me and Wallflower, and they tried to capture us. I distracted them, then I lost them in the streets before charming my way into this party. Even if the Inquisitors saw where I went, they wouldn't have been allowed past the door. Ulrun holds no sway among certain members of the aristocracy. So I picked a good place to lie low. That is, until the demon showed up. She shivers and wraps her arms around herself. Now that's more like it. So I haven't inadvertently been harbouring a traitor wanted by the Canabra's Inquisition. This day wasn't such a waste after all. Do you know where the third of your group is? Wallflower? No idea. If he knows about the demon attack, he won't just hide away. He'll go out and try to help people. If he doesn't know, well, you have no chance of finding him. He's a pretty skilled mage, but I doubt he'll risk using magic. He'll probably do something the Inquisitors won't expect. Pose as someone, disguise himself. He had a great selection of masquerade costumes in the temple. She becomes lost in thought for a moment. I know. I'll tie my shawl around your arm. Wallflower gave, me, gave it to me. He'll spot it right away and know you're a friend. If I were you, I'd look for him in the Canabras Market Square. Tell me about yourself. I am Aranka, travelling bard and follower of Desna. Many of my fellow bards are rootless misfits who wander the world, unwilling or unable to live a normal life. For me, that is only partly true. I have a wonderful family, my mother, father, grandmother and brother. Right now they are far away and I'm sure they miss me. But they have always supported me in my vocation and they let me be free to roam because they knew that I couldn't be happy while there was so much of the world that I hadn't explored and so many places where people might need my help. What can you tell me about the master of the house? About the Count? Her voice drops to a whisper. I've uh, wanted to smash a jug over his head about five times today already. He just brings that feeling out in people. It's one of his many talents. Other than that, well... You've probably already heard about the Arendae family. All I can say is that the Count's servants flee this place like rats from a sinking ship. No one ever stays here long, even though he pays them extravagantly. I even heard one servant complain that he always feels uneasy in the Count's home, like someone is watching him. 
unseen eyes staring at the back of his head. Even if his back is to the wall, even if it turns around, I don't know if I believe all these tales, but I'm just telling you what I've heard. Yeah, that's the word on the street too. The tiefling hunches his shoulders. This mansion, it's the tastiest morsel in the whole city, but all the thieves are afraid to even set foot in the street. Are you deliberately talking as if I'm not here? Excellent. Like any polite host, I shall return the favor and act as if you're not here either. Why did you decide to break into the wardstone and cast magic on it? Your life's at risk. Your information could have been a trap set by the demons. But it wasn't a demon trap, Aranka says forcefully. Then her voice softens and her expression turns pensive. You know, living next to the world wound and seeing the powerlessness of the Crusaders, it's very hard. We've been trying to defeat the demons for a hundred years now and we have nothing to show for it. I think that Queen Galfrey and the other leaders think that we can defeat evil if we line up our soldiers in perfect columns and send them marching off with a stirring battle cry. We just need a few more soldiers, a little more discipline, but we've been marching for a hundred years. And it's always one step forward, two steps back. And while the soldiers are marching, people like Holron are seizing power behind their backs. His fanaticism and cruelty were forged in the same furnace as the Crusaders' righteousness. We will never defeat the demons if we keep trying to march down this same path. We need to change tack, to challenge our principles, trust our hearts and our friends, and not mouldering doctrines. We need to listen to any entity that is willing to help us. My friends and I listened, and we trusted, and we tried to change something. At least we tried, even though it didn't work out. Great idea. Marching in straight lines won't work, so let's go attack the demons in a merry band of hopers and dreamers, brimming with enthusiasm and doing just whatever we feel like. When the demons see us coming, they'll die of hysterics and our victory will be complete. Naive children, that's what you are. But I admit, your words stir something in my soul. I wouldn't put you in charge of a military campaign, but I would be proud to fight alongside you. I killed Holron. He won't threaten you ever again. It's a shame it ended this way for him. Hopefully his successor will keep the Inquisitors in check. Can you get somewhere safe on your own? It looks like the Inquisitors aren't busting down the door just yet, and they're not hiding under the bed, so I think I'm safe for now. I'll be fine on my own. I'll go to our temple, to Ilks. Inquisitors must have searched there by now, so they won't go back a second time. Good luck. May Desna be with you, stranger. Now for the talk with Darren. Greetings, valiant stranger who has just burst into my life. I am the master of this house, Count Daron Kale, Myriad Mellifluous Monikers Arunde. No need to introduce yourself. I find remembering insignificant details, such as the name of passing acquaintances, such a bore. Sounds familiar. You'd probably get well along with Nenio. Wow. Bonafide blue bloods and unparalleled aristocracy. All this makes me itch to do something really crass. Ooh, like blow my nose on the curtains. <laughs> what are you waiting for, my squamous squire? The curtains in this room are velvet, but we have some excellent silk ones with gold thread elsewhere in the house. Take your pick. My soft furnishings are yours to do with as you wish. I'm quite sick of the place, truly. I shall either sell it or burn it to the ground and build a new mansion in its place. Darren is, uh, I mean, it's impossible not to like him because he's just so perfectly sassy. Now that we've finished with the niceties, tell me this. How did all those thrice damned demons end up at my soiree? Must have been some party to miss the fact that Canabras was being attacked by hordes of demons and Descari himself. Oh come, the party was deathly dull. Rather like one of the prelate's interminable sermons. I really ought to be grateful to the demons for their intrusion. They certainly added a frisson to the proceedings. It seems as though Descari's occasion was altogether more of a crush than mine. 
if you will pardon the pun. What should I know about you, Count, apart from the fact that you're high-born and very rich? As a child, I had my very own pony, but I always dreamed of having a lamb. I was never allowed one. Sheep were seen as peasant animals, utterly unsuitable for the scion of a noble line. The trauma haunts me to this day. I think of it every time I have roast lamb for dinner. <laughs> I'm sorry if I failed to sate your curiosity. I loathe talking about myself to people I don't know, even more to those I do know. The only thing worth knowing, aside from the fact that I am highborn and filthy rich, is that I dislike Puritans and demons in equal measure. Well, perhaps demons a tad more. You don't seem very concerned about the city's fate. I have no friends here whose untimely demise I would care to mourn. The only alarming thing is how easily all this happened. I don't care for the thought that demons could come calling at my door at any moment. And just think, everyone had so much faith in the ward stones gifted by Iomade's herald, and in the might of our tamed dragon. As if there had been no Dresden or a dozen other routes where the demons overcame every defense. The Arendes are one of the most ancient and noble families in Mendiv. They are related by blood to Queen Galfrey herself. The Count is the last remaining member of his dynasty. The rest all perished around ten years ago. In the tragedy at the family seat, Heaven's Edge, the demons got past the defenses and massacred everyone inside. I thank you for providing your friend with that helpful summary, my lady. I believe I've seen you before with that hilarious buffoon, Horgus Gworm. I sincerely hope you are not engaged in any kind of sordid arrangement with him. The thought of something so splendid in proximity to something so grotesque makes me feel quite ill. You deserve a better fate than that, no doubt. Your civility knows no bounds, Count. I most assuredly do not have any arrangement with Master Gworm. I expect a little gratitude for saving you. Of course, of course. Where are my manners? There. You can also poke about the house and claim whatever takes your fancy. Though I imagine some of you already had that in mind. How did you know, O oh esteemed Count? I'm feeling very attacked right now. You can go to the Defender's Heart. It's under the protection of Irabeth Tirabade and the Eagle Watch. I thank you for the invitation, but I am not quite as desperate as I may seem. At times, it is better to be surrounded by the repugnant mugs of demons than the sour and dour physiognomies of Iomade's righteous paladins. What about my physiognomy? Sour enough for his lordship? Don't worry, another few minutes with the dazzling count here, and it'll sour like weak old milk. <laughs> What's this? An attractive paladin with a sense of humor? You're a veritable walking scandal. Indeed. Either way, my mansion is now safe. I have a pair of half-decent guards. I just need to drag them out of the storeroom and bring them to their senses. I ordered them to drink a love potion, you see? For reasons which seemed extremely witty at the time and in the state of inebriation I then found myself in. They can guard the house while the valorous paladins beat back the demon assault. They will beat them back, yes? <laughs> As regards myself, I feel like stretching my legs. I know rudimentary divine spells, I am no friend to demons, and I elevate any society that I deign to grace with my presence. I shall accompany you. Only for a short time, of course. I have no desire to remain at the vanguard for a protracted period. What say you, my ephemeral but highly diverting acquaintance? After all, Lord Descari spoiled my party. I now burn with the desire to spoil his. Thoughts? Everybody's loving him. I don't like this guy much at all. Not even because of his personality, but just... I sense something dark about him. I guess thumping him one next time he comes out with more aristocratic witterings is not allowed? All the more reason to take him with us. If we don't kill him, the demons surely will. Don't ask me. 
Having him tag along would be like going for a nighttime stroll through the back alleys with a diamond tiara on your head. Even I don't like that kind of attention. The Count's presence can only benefit us. I think we should say yes. Huh? What? You're asking about whether to take this boy with you? The question lies outside the bounds of my interest. Of course. By the way, did you know that the young scions of noble families often sponsor the research of young scientists? What laudable passion for knowledge. True, the size of their donations bears a direct correlation to the hazardousness of the experiment being conducted. He doesn't look like a whiner, and he can hold his own, so he won't be dead weight. Deal. Capital. Good acquaintances that begin and end at just the right moment often leave the most pleasant memories. Wouldn't you say? I have no idea who I should switch out for him, though. Um... I kind of need everyone in my party right now. Eventually, Camellia will be the one that is going to take, or he's going to take her spot. I'm going to just send him back to the tavern for now, and we'll go back for him. Follow my lead. Quick save here. This is my kind of work. Good. And I don't think there's anything else here. No. The next place we want to go to is Gorm's Mansion. Uh, but I actually think that uh, even though this is on the shorter side of an episode, uh, we can do that in a separate episode of its own. So, um, uh, yeah, with that, if you do have any questions and or comments, then please do feel free to leave those in the comment section. And uh, for now, thank you all so very much for joining me, and I hope to see you all in the next episode.